Hey there. It's only the two of us today because one guy is playing hooky. Today we're going to talk to you about uh, the Sumava H3. Yeah, so we've obviously bought uh, quite a few copies from this farm for this 50-pound project. Yeah, you'd think we'd like Francisco or something. But uh, the reason that we bought this one is that uh, it actually caught my attention back in 2016. I was walking uh, along the farm in, in Costa Rica and uh, uh, some interesting looking coffee trees with a sign that said H3, uh, which is a cross uh, between uh, an Ethiopian land race accession uh, called like E531, which is found at a uh, seed bank uh, in, in Costa Rica, and it's a, a hybrid with that variety and Ketura. Uh, so this is classified as an F1 or first generation hybrid. And uh, the reason why it was... So was it developed in the lab then or in, at the university? It's developed bank? in a lab, yep. Right, so this is in a... Like just, so we, just so you're clear what an F1 is, maybe, because it's really what we're, try, what we're talking about is trying to find varieties that will be more drought res or you know, resistant to water, temperature, to, to address issues of climate change, right? And this variety failed all of them, <laughs> except for being super delicious. So people continued to plant it. There um, we go. <laughs> it doesn't resist rust. It isn't good with water. And it, it's, 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 it tastes uh, good. It's not the most resilient coffee, but that's OK. Uh, uh, so when Francisco bought the plot of land that Sumaba is on, this coffee was there. Uh, and, he, and he kept it. And uh, um, the, the seeds inside are not actually like seeds of H3. You're going to get seeds of either E531 or Ketura. This is not a, a coffee that will, like, can be propagated through seeds. It needs to be propagated through... Um, through grafting. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's interesting. The, the coffee itself reverts back to its original parents, one way or the other. Yep. That's, so it, that's, that's a cool thing. That's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So they actually have a nursery where they, before they found this out, where they tried to plant it, uh, propagate <laughs> seedlings, and then all the seedlings looked totally different. They were like, what the hell's going on? And that's, <laughs> oh, because they are, uh, each seed has characteristics of one of the two parents, which is pretty cool. Um, the fruit that are on the seeds tastes amazing. I, I think I've probably eaten about a kilo's worth of the fruit uh, itself because it's just super delicious. It's like, it tastes like papaya. That's, yeah. like the, that's like the biggest flavor that you get mm. out of it. And I'm not even a fan of papaya, but in this case, like you don't have that like squashy, savory undertone yeah. that you get with papaya. This is just like sweet, fruity, delicious. Huh. Coffee's, yeah. coffee's always good, but I don't think I tried the, the, I don't think I tried the H2. Oh yeah, we did. Did we? Okay. Oh yeah, we totally okay. did. There we go. Um, yeah, and uh, because Jordan's not here, I figured we could do something that's not an, a V60. Uh, let's branch out a little bit. So we're going to do an AeroPress, but we're, we're not going to do a crazy AeroPress recipe. Uh, this is going to be really, really basic. We're going to do 17 grams of ground coffee, 270 grams of hot water on top. Cool. AeroPresses are really good if you haven't tried it in terms of, they make good coffee and they're good for traveling with. I hate them because they only make a very small amount of AeroPresses coffee. are good. I hate them. Well, I just, I'm pers I just like, I'd rather, I'd rather pack a box and put my Technivorm in my, in my luggage than go through this every day trying to make coffee for five people. It takes forever. For five but, people, yeah. But for one for person. For one person, it's, it's fine. If you only want to drink eight ounces of coffee, which isn't enough, to be honest. <clears throat> but... But yeah, getting back to the, H, the F1, it is really a crisis um, within the coffee industry. H3. And it, the, the H3, but the, an F1, oh, the, okay. the, the whole process of trying to come up with new varietals, um, it has become, a, it has become a, <clears throat> a bit of a global, a global endeavor to, to fix the problem because coffee just isn't well suited to climate change. Uh, coffee doesn't do well with wet, constant wet. It needs wet and dry. <clears throat> and... Um, while wet, while rain will set blooms on a coffee tree, perpetual rain will create uh, coffee leaf rust, which just basically turns the leaves black and they all fall off the tree. And of course, a tree with no leaves doesn't, doesn't do very well. And uh, yeah, so there's a, real, there's a real push to try to find, not, creating cross hybrids is not the issue, it's creating hybrids that taste good, that have quality in the cup. And that's, that's the real challenge. 
but it's happening. It's it is totally happening. happening. Yeah, it is. We've um, got we've, we're making progress. It takes a while, right? Like if oh, you're going to yeah. breed new varieties, I mean, the old way was just through uh, sort of like artificial selection by planting a bunch of trees, seeing which ones looked good, yeah. taking the seeds from those, planting some more, seeing which looked good, and then slowly narrowing down the genetic pool. Yeah. Uh, and that you know could take 15, 20, 30 years even. The lab process just makes it fast. The labs, so quick. So now there's more genetic analysis happening. Now there's more grafting. And there, there, uh, there hasn't been any genetic modification. Yeah, there's only no GMO. genetic analysis. Yeah. No, no GMOs. Which there's a debate about regardless. There is, but I'm, <laughs> we're not going to wade into it right now. No, we're, not. we're not geneticists. We're not. Okay, so it's at two minutes. So I'm just going to swirl this, break up the crust on the top. Nice, and then we're going to begin the slow plunge. The slow plunge. Mm -hmm. The reason why I like the AeroPress is that you can make very small quantities. Uh, the cleanup is quite easy. Um, it travels re really well, so I bring an AeroPress with me every time I go to a coffee producing country, so if I'm on the road anywhere. Always AeroPressing, always. A little bit floral, pretty delicate. Mm -hmm. This thing's got like a little bit of like a honeycomb flavor as well. It's really cool. I'm really enjoying it. Um, if you want to bring out more of the fruit, you can actually just updose the coffee a little bit. Um, that that will sort of like reduce the overall extraction yield, but bring up the uh, the sort of like fruitier qualities in it. A bit more like melon and tropical quality, kind of like mango-ish. Really good stuff. So you go to 20 grams in? Is that an uptose? So this is 17 to, to, to 270. You could probably go up to 18, 19, 20. Okay. The coffee will likely be a bit stronger, so you can grind a bit coarser if you want. But that's entirely up to you. That's the cool thing with the AeroPress. There's so much stuff you can alter with it. It's nice. a great way. Uh, and it's a great way to like really play around with like the wide range of flavors that are available in this coffee, because I think there are a lot of them. Lots of really good stuff. Right. And that's a good point. <clears throat> What's really amazing about coffee, especially coffee like this, is how much of a variation in flavor you get based on how you brew the coffee. So if we brewed this coffee on a Technoform, we'd get a different profile or a different expression. If you did it on an Aero, or V60, it's amazing how brewing, the brewing method alters the, the, the flavor Absolutely. profile. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Till next time. Till next time. Cheers.